Welcome to another video and today I want to show you this really cool code that I made um, and it's really interesting so let's just let's just get into it so I'm just gonna open up my editor which is Visual Studio Code and see my face right here nice so this is a code I'm working on right now um, I'm just gonna open this thing and so you can see my files and oil tracker so it's an 80 line code and um, I'm just gonna explain everything so we're just importing these libraries so we, I'm importing pandas as PD and what this library does is like it can read CSV files and can plot stuff so yeah I use that that library to to read a, a file which has the values so which has the values so if you want to install pandas you just go pip install pandas and that should be it so as pd so i'm just saying so i want to like refer it refer to it as pd so as you can see over here we're saying like let's see where is it pd.read csv instead of pandas.read csv uh here we're also doing import matplotlib the pyplot as plt which which means like we're importing matplotlib which is a library to plot and to graph uh, values so if you want to download matplotlib you just go import i mean pip install matplotlib on your terminal or command line and that should be good next we have import matplotlib the pyplot but from but here we're just importing these three these three specific libraries so i can just say plot draw or show without having to go matplotlib or, or plt dot dot draw dot show or dot plot. So yeah, and then we have term color, um, which is a library to um, to output uh, colored outputs. Yeah. So if you want to install, you just go into pip install term color on your terminal or command line. And then we do the same with cprint, which is also to make colors. So pip install cprint, <clears throat> and that should be it. So now we call pd dot set option display max rows uh, none which means that it's it's going to display every row so normally when you when you don't put this like you comment this out when you don't put this it will just like when there's a csv file that is too big it just like puts three dots so you don't see everything so when we put this it will show the whole file so here i have this file called brent daily uh, csv which is a file that i downloaded and the link to the file will be in the description if you would like to download it. And this file contains the oil prices from from 1980, I think, until 2020. And so, yeah, so this so this is code will just plot the oil prices from 2015 until 2020 because uh, I felt like it's better from 2015 to 2020. Um, and then you want to get the data from 2015 to 2020. And so here we just assign data to P pandas.readcsv and then we put this name of the csv and here we're accessing index 7008 until the end so if i open up the csv file <clears throat> so i'm going to open up the csv file here here it is give it a second and you see here you can see that this is going to be the first index or the index zero and if I scroll down here, we can see that 7008 is the first day of 2015. So it shows 7008. So yeah. And so let's close that. So it's getting 2015 until 2020. This in this thing. So now we're putting the US the US prices because of the the file is in US dollars, so we're just taking a list of the data. And then the Canadian prices, which we're going to convert, because this is what the output is going to be. As you can see, so you have the Canadian prices in green, and then you have the US prices in red. So we're going to convert it. And then here we have the dates. It's a, it's a list of all the data and then a date. So I, I didn't use this variable yet, but I could use it. And put it in the uh, in the image, so we could put the dates here at the bottom. But I didn't do that yet. 
So now we have a dictionary called total, and that is going to be the total of with the dates assigned with the price. So now for every price and and date in zip US prices and dates. So what this does zip is it takes two lists and it goes like it goes first list and then second list and assigns the two variables to the values. So it looks at the two lists and assigns every value like that. So US prices are going to go to price and then dates is going to go to date. So now we're we're adding to the total dictionary. We're adding a uh, an item here, which is with the, the value of price, okay, and you're gonna have a key of date. So the key is gonna be date, and the price is gonna be the value. <clears throat> so, by the way, if you wanna download the code, uh, check the GitHub link in the description, okay? And uh, so now for each value in the US prices, now we're gonna convert to Canadian prices. So this is not, very precise because Canadian prices changed, but this but this project is not very precise. So, so yeah, I just converted. I just checked the conversion from U.S. dollars to Canadian, and then uh, I took the value and then times one point forty three because, oops, well, because when you go on Google, when you go on Google, you check USD to Canada. And it changed, so see, it's it's like not very precise. It's one point forty one now. It was one point forty three before, so I can change it right now. One point forty one, like that. Now, and it shows the plot figure. So we're 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 calling the matplotlib the pi plot, and the figure is just an empty plot, an empty graph. So there's nothing on him, and then we're adding axes, which is like. Uh, axis is like the the plot with the values, but the figure is just the 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 plane. Okay, like there's nothing on it. But they would add, when we're adding an axis, we're adding like the values, and then we're adding here the x label and the y label. So here we we're gonna plot it now, and we're gonna plot the U.S. prices with the label of USD. So the label of USD, as we can see here, USD. This is what it's gonna be in red color equal red and then do the same thing for the canadian prices but in green and now here if you go to J jupyter notebook and i'm not going to open it up but I, I set an y label which is price so y label is going to be here which is going to be price and then the x label is going to be the years so over the years which is going to be down here yeah so, next we put a title, price of the oil over the years, and then we show the legend. So if you don't put this, it's not going to show the legend. So I'm just going to run this again. Whoops. It's not what I want. I have to run it. I didn't run it before. See. Um, so as you can see, this is the plot. And it doesn't show the legend anymore because we didn't specify to show it. So now it asks you if you want to save it. You say yes, and then you ask. It asks the name, so you say oil, oil.png. Uh, but you just want to show it. So now you save the figure into a variable named fig1. Because if you don't do this, what's going to happen? It's going to save a uh, an empty figure. There's going to be nothing on it. So you make sure to save it. So plt.gcf. So save figure. And then you want to show the plot. If you don't call this line, it's not going to show uh, the plot or the graph. Now, we're going to hear all of these lines, all of these lines are going to be to to save, uh, if you want to save the, the file. So, now we ask, we store in a variable called save it, and we, we ask an input, would you like to save this plot? And if they do, so if it's save it.lower and Dot lower, what it does, it just takes the input and lowers it. So everything is going to be like not caps. <laughs> so if it's equal to yes, then we ask them what's going to be the, the, the name of the file. And then we uh, put a new line there so it's not on the same line. And then we pr print plot save, saved as and then the name dot png. We're going to save it as a png. And the f string is a new thing in Python where you can concatenate 
a string and a variable into one print statement or one return statement. So add a dot png to the name. So we're adding name plus equal dot png. And so that if you let's say you name the oil, it's going to be oil dot png. And then you save it. So now we're calling this variable here, which should be saved. So it's going to be that one, that one that we saved already. And so if you didn't save it, it's going to show an empty plot. So you say fig one dot save fig, and then you save it as the name. And the DPI is the how big it is. So you can say like 50. And then let's run this again. So you have the plot. And then, uh, yeah. And then oil. So let's go check it out. Python files. And as you can see, it's not that big anymore. So you make sure uh, to put the 100 is good enough, I think. And then here, we're using the, the, the module we imported up there, the two modules, term color dot cprint. So here, you can just put your string that you want to print, and then you can put the color. So we're printing save the figure as, and then the name dot, and then you're putting it in green. And if they don't want to, you print out figure not saved in red. And if they put something else, you just say figure not saved as well. So you can go and run this. And you have the, the plot here. And you can check the values. And then you have the legend. And you say no. And then figure not saved. And so that's the code, guys. So you can check the GitHub link in the description. You can also check the link to downloading the display. I mean, the brand daily CSV.csv. Um, subscribe, like. Share my videos, and if you want to support me, there's a PayPal link in the description. Thank you.